Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first, we've got, uh, well, we'll go to the hazardous weather graphics uh, since fire danger is long gone, and uh, there are no watches, warnings, or advisories out uh, for at least the next 24 hours or longer, maybe through the weekend, even though we got a pretty good storm coming into the uh, Aleutians and the cutting across the southern Bering Sea. But that should only produce some gale warnings and it uh, doesn't look like it produce any public warnings is in the way of like uh, wind advisories or warnings or anything like that. So Northern Terry looking good. It'll be cloudy and kind of wet through the weekend, but uh, no warnings, watches or advisories anywhere. And again, I'll probably uh, extend through the weekend. And looking at the satellite imagery up uh, front, uh, bringing some rain to the uh, southeast coast, especially along the uh, central north coast or the heaviest amounts of rain, lighter amounts eastward and southeastward. But uh, clouds extending from the Queen Charlotte's all the way up in toward Lynn Canal Glacier Bay. And uh, Latuya Bay had about six tenths of an inch of precipitation while Sitka picked up uh, 22 hundredths. That's a 12 hour mounting at 3 p.m. this afternoon. And the uh, Copper River Basin, actually the North Gulf Coast, or Eastern North Gulf Coast, uh, kind of an outlier was uh, Cordova had just under nine tenths of an inch of precipitation today, but much lighter amounts uh, elsewhere and areas of rain into the Copper River Basin and clouds, along with some gusty winds, Gulcanacine winds gusting about 30 to 35 miles an hour uh, during the afternoon today. And uh, a little bit even stronger, Cook Inlet, uh, Kenai, gust near 40 miles an hour and uh, anywhere from 25 or 20 to 30 miles an hour in Northern Cook Inlet, Anchorage, up into the Madnuska, Susitna Valley areas. And Dillingham winds 25 miles an hour there. But you can see some clearing occurring over Cook Inlet and also over the eastern interior from Northway on up to not quite, but well, across the Eagle there, but not quite. Uh, looks like Arctic Village in the clouds and then also some clearing along the North Slope. And out to the west, you can see low pressure tracking south of the eastern Aleutians. That brought clouds and some light rain into the uh, Fox Islands, about two tenths to three tenths of an inch or a third of an inch. And sunshine, Adak, and possibly even Chimia, as well as some sun breaks for the Pribilof Islands, as a fair amount of clearing, actually, with a fair amount of clouds along with it there out over the Bering Sea and more in the way of clouds, St. Lawrence Island into the uh, Bering Strait and, of course, Seward Peninsula and Tin City picking up about uh, two tenths of an inch of precipitation while Ambler and Caltag had about a quarter of an inch of rain over the western interior today. And on the chart, you can see low pressure uh, northern Seward Peninsula near Shishmaref, about 1,002 millibar low there, and uh, uh, 994 millibar low just off the eastern Arctic coast, but uh, still some sunshine. Again, there's some clearing there over the eastern north slope and the eastern interior today. Otherwise, clouds, uh, rain, and showers covered uh, much of the remainder of the interior of the state, as well as the panhandle, with that uh, front weakening into, a, weakening into a trough here during the afternoon. Again, with the uh, heaviest rain along the central and north coast, uh, two-tenths to roughly about six-tenths of an inch, as I mentioned, on the north coast. And then that low pressure, 1,002 millibar low, just south of the Alaska Peninsula, uh, continue, will continue to move east. We had some scattered shower conditions over the southwest part of Kodiak Island, the Alaska Peninsula, but generally dry on the east side in Fognac Island. And the trough uh, out over the, uh, well, from the uh, southwest coast extends north of the Pribilof, so that may drop some showers into the Pribilof Islands uh, overnight tonight after the dry day, basically dry day you had today. And then the uh, clearing there over the Aleutians, that in advance of the next big storm coming in, uh, into toward the, uh, they'll bring the winds up uh, tonight for the western Aleutians. Could possibly see gale force winds uh, late tonight or after midnight out there. 
and a trough in advance of that will spread light rain, fog, and drizzle, and a little bit of an increase in the winds, but not much. That will be farther back to the west toward the main low center. But for the central illusions, it looks uh, IFR, cloudy, damp, and uh, as the clearing shifts off to the northeast there, and the northern Bering Sea not looking too bad. This could be some clearing with a few widely scattered showers, which stays wet and unsettled over in the northwest interior. And that low center attracts to uh, tracking south of Kodiak Island, but that'll bring a chance of rain in towards, say, the Trinity Island, Sitkanak area late tonight. Uh, and showers linger over the Barren Islands and in toward Kachemak Bay with areas of rain continuing for the North Gulf Coast into Prince William Sound, otherwise uh, scattered showers over the central interior and call it isolated showers over the eastern interior and kind of showery for the southeast coast. For Saturday, that storm, 980 millibar low, moving to near Shimian at two, and there should be a band of gale force winds in advance of that uh, frontal boundary there, pushing in toward Adak and Atka with a uh, good solid area of rain to go along with it and fog. And the gradient looks pretty tight along the back side of that low center, but that'll stay west of the uh, western Aleutians. And weak trough keeps uh, some clouds and some scattered shower activity for Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula. That'll extend up along the southwest coast and low pressure over the northwest interior. It'll be cloudy, unsettled, damp, and occasionally wet there into the western central Brooks Range. Well, as the eastern Arctic coast and the north Gulf coast still uh, Chance, uh, well, chance, probably occasional light rain and fog throughout the day. Call it showery for the Kenai Peninsula, Northern Cook Inlet, periods of light rain or showers, and still showery, mainly over the central and northern panhandle. It may dry out down across Prince of Wales Island, uh, with showers tending to diminish in that area during the afternoon. And uh, really not much in the way of sun anticipated in the interior of the state. Uh, you can see a few sun breaks on the eastern uh, areas from the uh, 40 mile country there, the uh, eastern Alaska range northward toward Eagle along the Yukon River, but uh, any sun you get anywhere is going to be a real bonus. Actually, it could be some clearing there with that ridging that's taking place uh, off the southwest coast there in advance of that storm, but uh, I didn't uh, draw any sand traps in there. Probably be mostly cloudy though. And then that trough will bring increasing rain to uh, Unmak Island, especially Nikolsky during the day as Unalaska Island stays dry. And again, could see some uh, periods of sun there for Unalaska Dutch Harbor in toward Falls Pass tomorrow afternoon. And then on Sunday, that low tracks eastward and uh, still doesn't weaken much, 983 millibars as it moves to north of Unmak Island. And that'll bring wind and rain to the Pribilofs throughout the entire day, starting Saturday night. And that'll stay through Sunday. Pretty uh, wet, windy day there. As well as the Alaska Peninsula could see gusts possibly as high as 50 miles an hour for Cold Bay. Uh, one of the windier spots there with, uh, again, some solid rain along with the front there for the Alaska Peninsula. And uh, improving out over the western Aleutians, though, with diminishing winds and becoming dry. Rain and showers again, central, western interior of the state, uh, but not to the extent uh, that you see tomorrow. Could be some better chance for sun. Places like uh, Fognac Island, maybe Iliamna Lake, Copper River Basin, and the northeast interior. And that front brings uh, rain into the southern panel, the heaviest amounts, with chance of thunderstorms actually uh, developing along the coast in the afternoon, just a chance. And looking at the low temperatures for tonight, uh, mid to upper 30s there for the Arctic coast and lower 30s over the north slope into the uh, central and eastern Brooks Range and then lower 40s, like 40 to 42, south of the Brooks Range into the Tanana Valley with the higher elevations into the 30s, into the Copper River Basin, Eagle, low forecast 34, otherwise 40s for the Panhandle, lower to mid 40s, Kodiak Island, south central Alaska, and mid 40s for the Aleutians and uh, 39 for Gamble. Highs for tomorrow in the uh, lower to mid 50s from the upper Yukon Valley right on down the Yukon Cuscombe River in toward the uh, lower areas and then upper 40s all the way out to the southwest coast and mid 50s south central Alaska Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak Island and 55 to 60 with the 60s if you have any will be occurring over the southern panhandle. And for low Sunday morning, looks like uh, 30s, central and northern interior to near freezing on the Arctic coast. Otherwise, upper 30s, lower 40s, south central Alaska, mid to upper 40s for the Panhandle. Highs the next day, 50s for the southeast coast. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. 
Moving on to flying weather for Saturday morning. Uh, looks like uh, most of Cook Inlet and into the southern Susitna Valley or southwestern Susitna Valley, VFR, but some IFR, Manuska Valley over into the east side of Turnigan Arm, Passage Canal, and along the coast range there of the North Gulf Coast, Southern Copper River Basin, and then a fair amount of VFR from the Eastern Alaska Range up across the uh, Upper Yukon River, IFR Brooks Range on up across the Western Central North Slope and Arctic Coast, and then mostly marginal there over uh, Central and Eastern Bering Sea, some IFR there, Seward Peninsula and the Lado Hills, and uh, the Southwest Mountains and the uh, Western Alaska Range, and the IFR with the next system pushing into the central Aleutian is extending westward to Shimianatu. And for the afternoon, that expands eastward there to uh, Atka Island and uh, deteriorating conditions moving into the eastern Aleutians. Uh, IFR probably holding off till Saturday night or, or sometimes Saturday evening. But marginal VFR for the remainder of the Bering Sea, Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay, as you can see, all across the western interior, marginal VFR, and some lingering IFR there along the Alaska Range and also along the coast range of the uh, eastern North Gulf Coast. Uh, mostly VFR for the Panhandle. Eastern interior looking good tomorrow afternoon. Uh, central and uh, upper Tanah Valley, 40 mile country, all the way up into the uh, upper Yukon Valley, Yukon Flats there. And then IFR for the Brooks Range and the Central Arctic Coast, IFR, North Slope, Marginal. And for the Sunday morning time frame, looks like uh, Kodiak, uh, Fognac Island, and Chinyak Marmot Bay areas, the state airport VFR, southwest and western part of the island, though marginal. Alaska Peninsula marginal, same thing for Bristol Bay, and the western interior areas, and the northern Bering Sea marginal. And a big slug of IFR out with that system there, pushing into uh, Unmak Island, and eventually Unalaska Island. Probably won't reach Dutch Harbor till probably Sunday evening and still southwest of the Pribilof Sunday night, probably into the IFR there. And marginal VFR for the Panhandle Central, but over toward the border could be some IFR. IFR there from the northern Koba Koyukuk Valleys across the Brooks Range to the Arctic Coast North Slope. Uh, better though, east and west of those areas. And uh, Cook Inlet, VFR into the Susitna Valley. And for the afternoon, Sunday afternoon, okay. Uh, now you've got the IFR into the Pribilof Islands and definitely for the Eastern Aleutians, now even the Alaska Peninsula and then improving back to the west there. It looks like VFR from roughly Amchitka to Shimia. IFR for the Brooks Range, Eastern Arctic Coast, marginal over much of the central and western interior. Not too bad though for Cook Inlet and uh, the Kenai Peninsula, Manuska Valley. Marginal VFR, uh, the Talkeetna Mountains into the Copper River Basins, holding VFR on the east side there and IFR lingering for the Brooks Range, marginal for the Panhandle. Passes Anatovic, IFR becoming marginal, same forecast for Adigan. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, IFR improving to marginal VFR in the afternoon. Rainy, just call it marginal throughout the day. Windy, IFR possible on the southern entrance throughout the day, and marginal otherwise through the pass in VFR in the, into the valley. And for Isabel, marginal VFR. Mentesta, optimistically VFR even in the morning. Uh, if you're going to be marginal, be early on in the day, but uh, I think it'll say VFR all day tomorrow. And Tanita, occasionally marginal. Portage, IFR becoming marginal. Chilkoot and White looks marginal. And for the freezing levels, 2,000 feet uh, there for the western north slope uh, down to the uh, western Brooks Range. 4,000 feet upper Yukon Valley down across the uh, Kamashak Bay, Shelikoff Strait along the Alaska Peninsula, and then the gradient with that system pushing some warmer air north into the Aleutians, six to 8,000 feet there, and about the same for the Panhandle. And icing uh, with that system coming in, that's the best chance of seeing any heavier icing of the considerable moderate variety, Rime. Uh, obviously freezing level to 16,000 feet or so, and then some areas of uh, light to very actually moderate or mixed Rime icing over the uh, North Gulf Coast into the central interior and then back over the Northwest. Jet stream, upper level low, uh, just east of St. Lawrence Island, you're actually on the Yukon Delta Coast there, Southern Norton Sound, another one south of Kodiak Island, yet another one kind of uh, over Mackenzie River Delta, and then the bigger storm out west there uh, near the Commodoreskis, and that's where the strongest jet is, 130 knots south of the Aleutians, 3,000 or 9,000 feet, 3,000, running out of time here. Uh, 70 knots there for the Western Aleutians, and then that results in moderate turbulence. 
Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and joining us once again is Eric Stevens, our good friend from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska, based up at UAF. And thanks for joining us, Eric. Really appreciate it. Oh, happy to be here, Dave. And we love to hear about all the fascinating developments, and new and old, and how the, we're using the tools here, especially around Alaska. And mm -hmm. I've got to think that, you know, satellite meteorology right now is a, a fascinating time to be involved in. If we go back to the first satellite, uh, was Tyros, back in 1960, I think is when we got some of those first pictures, uh, weather and meteorology probably changed that day for a whole lot of people, and it's mm -hmm. still changing today, right? Oh, you know it. Satellite imagery is so important, and it's getting better all the time. Yeah. Of course, never perfect, but especially for us in Alaska, where there are other data sets like radars and mm -hmm. weather balloons are so thinly spread, right. the satellite is the great equalizer because the satellite sees everything. Right. Yeah. Right. We've got one particular um, issue in volcanic ash detection. That's a big deal here. Yeah. You know it. If you fly an airplane into volcanic ash, uh, your jet engine might just fail. And, right. and an airplane without engines is in a world of hurt. Sure. So if there's a volcano that goes off, Satellite imagery is the way to track that plume of ash mm -hmm. and to tell pilots this is where you need to not be right. to avoid this ash plume. And uh, there's a, a phrase out there, what's the difference? What's you know, the what's difference? the difference? Okay. Well, it turns out, what we're going to discuss today, that the difference is everything. There's a technique called channel differencing. Okay. That if you take one piece of the spectrum of what the satellite detects, and a slightly different wavelength of that spectrum, even though those two images might look similar, magical things happen when you subtract one from the other huh. and they reveal information that was already there, but it was hard to find until you did that subtraction. That sounds like Nicolas Cage in National Treasure when he's got those fancy glasses <laughs> and he's flipping one up and back and forth. I mean, is this what we're talking about? Look, look. Let's go more highbrow and talk okay. Michelangelo. Oh, so okay. apparently Michelangelo <laughs> made some amazing sculpture yeah. and someone said, Michael, that's amazing. How did you do it? Mm -hmm. And Michelangelo's reply allegedly was, well, you know, in that rock, the statue was already in there. Right. I just scraped away the unnecessary bits. In satellite meteorology, yeah. sometimes there are meteorological features that are in the data, but you can't see it until you combine or difference some of the channels. Okay. When we've got a case, good old uh, Pavlov volcano right. goes off now and then. Sure. And uh, you can observe directly uh, a picture of the volcano. You know, just take it with your iPhone. Yeah. You can see a volcano going off. Yep. Right. But if you want to get the broad view, we need satellite mm -hmm. to do that. Now, there are a couple of wavelengths that we can look at. Wait. So what's a wavelength? What that's, a wavelength? The, yeah. that's the amount of space between a peak and a valley and another peak uh, in a certain part of the electromagnetic spectrum. We're going to look at 12 micron wavelength wow. and 10.8 micron wavelength. What is a micron? So what's a micron? Yeah, we're getting into the geek department now. A <laughs> micron is a unit of length, and it is quite tiny. We're looking at what's called long wave uh, wavelengths, okay. but it takes 25,000 of these microns to make an inch, uh, a human Whoa. blood cell is about five microns across. So when we're talking about 12 micron imagery as allegedly long wave, well, that's relative. Pretty and, short for light. Yeah, yeah. it's other okay. part of the. Uh, it's it's just a, an expression for the the spectrum there. Okay. So we can look at a at a 12 micron image, say a satellite image at 12 microns. We're seeing a heat signature here, really, and and the way this color enhancement works is the the yellow and the red stuff is is high cold clouds down mm -hmm. here over the Gulf of Alaska into South Central, and if you were set you were asked where do you find the uh, volcanic ash plume in this image? Hey, where do you find the volcanic plume in this image? Eric? It's hard to do. I'm yeah. not sure I could find it. If you <laughs> if you were to look at this image and just say show me the, what you what jumps out at you here, I'd say well n nothing really. Well, let's okay. look. So 12 micron doesn't help us. Okay. Let's look at 10.8 microns. All right. All right. Look at that. It's practically the same image. So mm. where's this volcanic ash? Can't find it at 12 microns. Can't really see it at, at 10.8. Mm -hmm. But when we take subtract one channel from the other, oh. magically the huh. plume appears. The color enhancement here yeah. uh, highlights the ash in blue. Wow. The data, the information was already there, but we couldn't find it until we subtracted one channel from another. Very it's, interesting. It's almost magical. Similarly, let's say you're looking for fog up on the north slope. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a foggy neighborhood. Sure. Um, in 11 micron and 3.9 micron, we've got a 3.9 micron image here. Um, 
it's a big fuzzy blur over Barrow. We, mm -hmm. we can't see where the fog is. But the information is lurking in there waiting for us to, to reveal it. All we have to do is find that difference between the 11 micron and the 3.9, and then this image oh. becomes this image, and the fog bank jumps right out, and you can see it up there at Barrow. Now, every you got to choose the right tool for the job, sure. like they say. You open your right. toolbox, all kinds of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. What do we need for this particular task? If you want to find volcanic ash, we look at 12 and 10.8 micron, find that difference. If you want okay. to find fog, we'll look at 11 and 3.9 micron, find that difference. It's great, different tools for different jobs. Of course, there's always caveats and gotchas, but this <laughs> fog procedure, yeah. it only works at night, because when the sun oh. comes up, it, it gets in the way. Um, so every product has its strengths and limitations, and in meteorology, the challenge is using the right tool for the right job, and these are some of those tools. And discovery is still happening, even with meteorology. The weather's been around for a long time, but the yeah. tools that are being developed to understand the meteorology is a fascinating and still very new science. It's, a, it's such a young science. We've come so far. I'm getting old enough now that I can literally <laughs> say that, you know, when I was a boy, we didn't have this kind of thing. Uh -huh. and, and there's new things happening all the time. New satellites will be launched in coming years that will have better instruments than ever before. It's an exciting time, and this is so helpful for Alaska because satellites mm -hmm. help fill in the gaps between other ways obser of the observing the weather. Satellites the great equalizer for Alaska. Yeah, and help so many people stay safe in so many ways every you know day it. up here in the last frontier. Yeah, it's what it's all about, protecting lives and property. Well, thank you so much for joining us again, Eric. We love to hear about this fascinating information, mm -hmm. and uh, boy, it just makes me want to go watch satellite pictures all day. So <laughs> hopefully sure we're inspiring more people to do the same thing, and uh, just be curious. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts, and we'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, looking at the sea ice analysis there, uh, well, not much over the uh, Chuxi Sea there, way off to the north of uh, Wrangell Island, but uh, in much closer over the Beaufort Sea, but still a fair ways off the coast, even the lighter ice on the eastern Arctic coast, and not much change expected uh, through the weekend into the first of next week. And moving on to the coastal water forecast, not bad for the Panhandle tomorrow. West-northwest uh, breeze, 10 to 15 knots, seven-foot seas on the south coast. North coast, south to southwest at 10 with seven-foot seas. And for the central and northern inside waters, winds will be predominantly south or variable to south at 10 knots with slight seas and northwest 10 for Clarence Strait with two-foot seas. And then winds pick up on Sunday there with uh, on the north coast, small craft advisory, southeast 25 knots with 8-foot seas and 20-knot southerlies for the south coast with 7 to 8-foot seas and a little bit more of a breeze over the inside waters, mostly southerly at uh, 15 knots, central and northern inside areas with 3-foot seas, Clarence Strait, southeast 15 seas, 3 feet. Cook Inlet, south to southwest breeze tomorrow, 15 knots, 3-foot seas. Variable to northeast uh, winds for the Kamishak Bay area. Uh, Kachemak Bay will probably be variable on the light side as well. And for the Barren Islands, northeast winds at 15 knots. And south to southeast winds, 10 knots. Pretty light there for the North Gulf Coast. Same thing for Prince William Sound. Two foot seas there and about five to six feet for the North Gulf Coast. Sunday, Cook Inlet, uh, northeast winds, northern Cook Inlet at 10 knots and light. Northwest breeze there for Southern Cook Inlet at 10 knots. Barren Islands uh, west at 15 and Kamishak Bay west at 10. And uh, for the uh, eastern North Gulf Coast, uh, southeast at 15, northeast 15 for Prince William Sound. Shelikoff Strait, north winds at 15 knots. Otherwise, small craft advisories east side of Kodiak Island, northerly at 25 knots. And that'll extend down to Castle Cape there for the uh, Alaska Peninsula. And then west 25 knots, Castle Cape to Cape Sarichaf on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, a lighter west of 15, west 15 also for Bristol Bay. And then for Saturday, not much change, uh, west winds 15 knots, Bristol Bay all the way down to Cape Sarichaf. And then the south side of the peninsula there from, actually from uh, Cape Sarichaf all the way up to Sitkanak, looking at small craft advisory winds at 25 knots with north 25 continuing there or becoming north at 25 for the east side of Kodiak Island. And then for the uh, outlook on Sunday, 
we've got uh, Southeast 10 for Shilikov Street, West 15 for the east side of Kodiak, and Small Craft Advisories there, Sitkanak, Southeast 25 for Bristol Bay, and then those winds coming up to uh, Gale Force there on the north side of the Alaska Peninsula, 30 to 35 knots. And for the Aleutians tomorrow, uh, Western Aleutians, uh, solid gales coming in, 40 knots sustained out of the south of that storm, 13 to 17 foot seas, and winds coming up close to Gale Forest, but uh, probably staying under, 30 knots should cover it pretty good for Adak and Atka out of the south. And on Alaska Island, Westerlies 15 to 20 knots, Unmak Island, Southwest 15 to 20 knots. And for Sunday there, gale, gales now across uh, all of the Aleutians, uh, Backside of the storm, tighter gradient, so we've got uh, storms just under storm force. Northwest, 45 knots for Amchitka all the way out to Shimian Atu. It sees uh, 15 to 20 feet. 45 knot winds, Adak and Atka from the west southwest, sees 17 to 24 feet, and 35 knots to maybe 40 knots there for the eastern Aleutians with 7 to 19 foot seas. For the Bering Sea, lighter winds. Uh, or light winds on Saturday, west 15 for the Pribilofs along the southwest coast, west winds 15 knots, west northwest 20 knots, northern Bering Sea into Norton Sound. And for Sunday, with that storm approaching, winds will respond over the Pribilofs, come up to southeast, sustained to 40 knots, seas building to 10 feet, 30 knot winds there along the southwest coast. Out of the northeast from the Yukon Delta to St. Matthew Island, northeast 20 for St. Lawrence Island. And the eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, west winds 20 knots, north 25 for the central coast, and then northeast 15 on the west side, and 20 knot winds for Co uh, the uh, Chuck CC. And for Sunday, look for uh, west northwest 20 25 knots on the eastern Arctic coast, otherwise northerlies 15 for the central and west side, and then 20 knot winds for the Chuck CC from Wales to Cape Beaufort. And for tonight again, uh, clouds and showers over the interior. Now I'm out of time. Thanks for joining us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.